All right. Hopefully you can all hear me. I'll tell you about my um, crazy day. And um, if some of you, a hundred people saw that I went live for like a couple minutes while I was trying to work on settings. <laughs> I was in my back office looking at everything and I was like trying to delete all these like fake live streams to connect to this OBS software that I have. And on one, it had like 101 people viewing it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm sure I was just like picking my nose and staring at the screen. So if you're one of them, this is the real one. All right. Hello, Beth. Hello. Hello. Hopefully you can all hear me. I'm assuming because nobody's saying I can't hear you. If I had to listen to Cody like Jenny does, I would be drunk. You know what? It has almost driven me to drink in the past. <laughs> and I'm not really much of a drinker. I drink for the taste of it. So I like me a sweet drink. Give me a margarita or an amaretto sour and I'm happy. Other than that, I pretty much stay away from it because I'm on the eternal, I need to lose 10 to 20 pound diet and I try not to drink my calories, but um, he makes me want to drink. Yes. Hiya, Jenny. Hello. All right. Just scrapping. Good to see you here. Um, do you still answer your Insta? That's a very good thing to start with. <laughs> very good thing to start with. Let me start right there. Um, I started my Insta the same time I started this channel. Never went on it for forever. Somebody in like the comments under one of the videos is like, I'm sending you messages and Insta, but you're not responding. I'm like, oh, I should go over there. And I went and I saw there were some messages in there. I don't even think I responded to them. And then I never, I never went back there again. So that's one of my um, priorities of something to do because... In the event this channel gets taken down, I have heard from so many content creators that they have sub channels and second channels and Instagram and Facebook pages and all that. And it's also a way to communicate with people if for some reason their page gets taken down. So I thought I could start advertising there. It's called Senior Perspective 123, I believe, um, which is also my email address, Senior Perspective 123 at Gmail. Um, and then senior perspective one two three, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the name. <laughs> Tells you how long it's been since I've been on it. Oh my goodness! Hello, fellow sister friends. That's cute, Elizabeth. I like that. Sister friends. Aw, you're all sister friends. <gasps> that's what I'm gonna call my people. You're all sister friends. You know, how everyone has something like, like I, I can't even think. When they have followers, they come up with a name for them. Why Why are no examples coming to my mind right now? Uh, Juicy Scoopers, follow Heather McDonald. Um, Chumps, follow Jeff Lewis. Um, and I'm sure all the celebrities have people too. You're all my sister friends. I'm cloning it. Cloning it here on, you know, I'm writing it down too because I'll forget. Sister friends. All right, I'm going to slow down. I did rewatch my video to critique myself and I cringed. So I appreciate all the lovely comments you had. I am a fast talker. When I do the video, somehow because I'm thinking about what to say ahead of time, I slow down. But in the chat, it's like my normal life where I'm just like, da -da 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 and that doesn't read well through video. And I noticed when I was reading the comments, I was the one reading them. And so some of them, I understood what I was saying because I remember them from reading them. But there were a few that I'm like, what, what was that? <laughs> I didn't even understand myself. So I'm going to try to slow down. What happens is I get so excited and the chat is scrolling that I just want to make sure I get everybody. So I start talking even faster and I shouldn't do that. If I don't get everybody, it's okay. It's better that everybody understands me. Tina here. Love your videos. You look younger than a senior. Thank you. I agree with your perspective. Enjoy your sense of humor in your video clips. Thank you very much. All right. No dudes allowed. There was one dude last week. Yes. Yes. And he was good. He was good but we're still sister friends. For my commenting name, I don't know how to change it. You know what? Google it. It's something in the original settings when you first set up your YouTube page. 
that it assigned you one, but then you could choose something else. And so like, you don't realize that sometimes it pops up. I have texts coming through here. Let me turn all these off. Um, um, that, it has something to do with that settings, but you can change it somehow. I'm just not 100% sure. Although, you know, that's interesting because you know my sub channel that I have now used to be uh, Teacher Jenny something. And I changed the name of the channel to um, Reality Breakdown, Reality TV Breakdown. So if you haven't subscribed to that channel yet, do me a favor, go to Reality TV Breakdown, because that's the guaranteed channel that we can go to if for some reason I ever screw something up or somebody says something and I don't catch it and it gets flagged or whatever. Um, and apparently some people who just don't like certain YouTubers will report them and they temporarily shut their channel down until they investigate and then they realize it's fake, which is horrible, but apparently it happens. Um, so make sure you're subscribed to that channel. And then when I start with Seeking Sister Wives, which comes in March, those will all be posted on that reality TV breakdown channel. Okay. If you can't find it, cause it's a fairly new channel, you can, I try to put it on my show notes and in my name description on my YouTube page, YouTube, <sighs> chin slam YouTube as this is the platform that I'm kind of starting a little sub side career, but um, it could use some help to get them something straight. I'm telling you that being said, let me explain. I am not using my OBS software because it will not communicate with YouTube. And I'm doing OBS cause it's free, but it was highly recommended online. StreamYard's the other one. You do pay for it, but they don't recommend StreamYard because it takes so much CPUs or memory or something on your computer that it tends to lag. And I'm like, well, that stinks. I don't want it to lag. And I do watch some YouTubers who use it. And every now and then I'll see it buffer or they'll freeze. And I'm like, oh, I want to avoid that if I can. It's not Scarlett. It's actually Jennifer. We have the same name. Huh? I don't need my family following me. <laughs> I'm a good girl. Oh, I believe you. You just love that movie. Yes, Scarlet Letter is a good movie. Good book. Good movie. All right. Near Rochester. Up north. I went close-ish to Rochester a lot of times because I used to have a, um, my husband's brother lived in Corning for many years. Had a, bought a big mansion. Old mansion. Haunted, actually. Um and had all these secret passages and everything it was amazing. And they turned it into a and b So we would go every Christmas with the kids when they were growing up because they normally never let kids stay at there. And they had a lot of hoarding class and antiques and it wasn't kid friendly, but he'd get all excited when we would come just for a couple of days after Christmas. Oregon, I love how you're all talking to each other. That makes me just giddy excited. Love it, sister friends. Uh, Lynn said hi to Tina Guy. Tina Guy, you're here. Oh, there you are. Yes. Hi, Tina Guy. Hello from North Carolina. Your comments always make me smile too. So many of your comments make me smile. Honestly, when I respond and I say you made me laugh out loud, that's like, you know how things will make you smile or make you happy when you read them. But like when I literally find myself laughing out loud at just reading a comment, I have to write in there. Okay, I laughed out loud. Uh, you're all are funny. You're funny. Uh, Crystal's Panda. You're from Alaska too? <gasps> There's two of you. Caribou Woman's from Alaska. She's from like um, Wasilla Palmer area. Where are you from, Crystal's Panda? All right. Butterfly. I changed my name. I was showing up as Amy Beth, but I finally figured out how to change it. All right, Buster. If you remember, write it in the chat so that other people can figure it out. All right. That's what we do. That's right, Lori. Thank you. Get rid of all the riffraff. There was somebody who wrote a comment 
And when I was re-watching it and cringing at myself last week, I re- I heard myself say, oh, and I read what the comment was. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. And I just kept going on. I actually sat down and Googled it. And it's like a video of somebody. So it was just some random that saw that we were live and just put the the comment in there so that I guess people would go see the video. I didn't click on the video, but I saw that it was the name of a video. All right. You lost the chat. You know what? Just refresh, go out and go back in and you'll, you'll, it'll probably be there, Scarlett. All right. Open hearts. I opened the West side hospital on Oahu. Oh, unfortunately COVID destroyed me. Wow. You opened a hospital on the West side. A couple years ago for Christmas, we went to um, Oahu, our family. It had been probably six or seven years since our whole family went on a vacation together. And my one daughter was actually married, but they were living apart, California and um, Nashville at the time. Long story, I won't go into it, but her and her husband were separate. And he was finishing up his last year of schooling there. Um using the GI Bill, he was in the service for four years first in the Marines. And so he was finishing up his um, a business degree and she got a job in Nashville and he's like, oh, that's where we want to live. We don't want to live in California. No offense to all those of you who live in California, <laughs> but it's expensive. People aren't as friendly. It's very isolating. There's a lot of people, but it's very isolating. It's hard to make connections. And she moved to Nashville instantly. She got like all these great friends and it's just... You know what? Here's a funny story. And then I will I will get to our book and talk about that. But we went to Nashville. I don't know if it was when I was moving her. I think so, because we looked for her apartment online um, at the time and rented it and everything sight unseen. And she flew out there and I went down and my other daughter was with me as well. And so the two of us helped her move into her apartment and her husband was in school at the time. And I'm like, no big deal. We got it. We're in driving distance and then we'll have a car and it'll be fine. Um, so we went to a place called the listening room. If any of you have ever uh, been to Nashville, it's very much like Bluebird Cafe, just not as small and quaint. It's not like a, a round, it's a stage, but it's at, when we were there once, somebody from American Idol was up on the stage. Sometimes they're complete nobodies, but they're people who wrote these songs and then they play the songs and they tell the story. And sometimes it's like, oh, I wrote this for Garth Brooks. And then all of a sudden, you know, like the rose or the dance or something um, comes up and it's just a a fun time. Why did I start talking about this? Oh, because (laughs) when I moved my daughter to Nashville and I'm like, I think you're going to feel more at home here. I think that this is going to be, she's like, no, I think so too. I think so too. And her husband is from a small town in Idaho. So farm grew up, 17 horses, cows, pigs, chickens, the whole lot. Um, so they were like, yeah, that's why he's like, yeah, move. You go move to Nashville. I will follow you there as soon as I'm done with my degree because you can't transfer with one year left in a, a university. Um, so we go to the listening room and we sat down and there was a gentleman talking at the table next to us. I thought he was with that table. And then he got up and started talking to us. And I'm like, oh, this is just a friendly guy. We didn't know till later he was actually the talent that was going to be on stage. We just thought he was a really friendly man going around talking. And um, he was asking where we were from and the whole situation. And my daughter said that, you know, we're from Ohio, but she's like, I just... I, um, my my mom, my sister are here because they're helping me move. I, I'm moving to Nashville this weekend. And he's like, oh, welcome home. And it was just the sweetest, most sincere in his low, rich voice. He's like, welcome home. And and from that point on, it was like, this is her home. I don't know if I'm ever going to get her to move back to Ohio. Why I started the story. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Senior brain. All right. All right. All right. Super. We're all caught up. Scarlett, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. That is so sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't put it on the screen because I need my OBS software to do that. (laughs) But let me acknowledge you and um, I appreciate it. Y'all don't have to do that, but I um, appreciate it if you do. That's lovely. All right. 
Um, you're pulling a Cody rambling. I am, but do I make sense? <laughs> if I don't make sense, I'm like really scared. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm going off. I'm going off on tan tangential speech. That's what he does. Yes, he does. Uh, Beth Mortally. Do I pronounce it? Is it Mortally or Mortally? Mortally. Hello. Thank you for the super sticker. And it's very cute. I appreciate that. That is lovely. All right. Let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. And this is your first super on a live stream too, Beth. That's awesome. Good for you. Good for you for figuring it out. Y'all are smarter than me. Oh, oh, Mama Squirrel. Has my cat joined? Actually, by the time I'm reading this. Oh. There she is. Yes, she is. All right. So this is what I'm going to start doing with you guys today. Let me tell you the little bit of a story. My book came. It arrived Monday, I think. And it was in a, I bought it used because I really didn't want to support um, Cody or Robin. <laughs> so I'm like, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um I found a used book. I think it was Abe Books. And they shipped it in a um, really, really heavy paper kind of shipping package that you can't rip, which is fine, except that the book, the it was ripped on the one side. Well, yeah, I should say it doesn't rip. Well, unless it goes through the postage machines that are massive. Take a look at this. Look what it did to the book. That's exactly where the rip was in the thing, too. That's how intense those sorting machines are. If something gets stuck in it, too, it completely took a chunk out of the book cover. I guess it's apropos for this story. <laughs> so, yeah, I think this book was actually a library book at one point that they decided to pull off the library shelves because whatever... Um, site. I'm not sure if it's a books. I ordered some used books, some other used books recently. It may have been a different site, but um, I thought we could do the prelude or the preface or whatever it's called in the book today and discuss. All right. Let me catch up here before I go. You're all talking to each other. Love it. Love it. Waving hi to everyone. Waving hi to the kitty. Oh, she's closer. Oh, she's sitting on papers now on the floor that I didn't pick up. I'm glad you all can't see them. All right. What is on your plant drives me crazy looks like? <laughs> no, it's a, um, it's <laughs> up close. It's not as bad. My, my, um, sister-in-law does ceramics. And one year she sent all my kids their name in ceramics. And my one daughter's name is Gabrielle and she goes by Gabby for short. And then she had a little holes here and it had like a thing that it could be hung. But the ribbon broke at some point, but this is actually my daughter's room. Um, this was her bedroom. And um, in 20, yeah, yeah, it was 2021, I think. No, the end of 2020, she was still in California. And if any of you are from California, you know, or at least Los Angeles County, it shut down, shut down. Like she couldn't even jog outside anymore unless you had a mask on, which was impossible. Um, like you could, public parks were closed. The beaches were closed. Like you couldn't go anywhere. It was much worse than, than it was in Ohio in terms of restrictions. Um, and she, you know, it just kind of got lonely so she decided, and I said, well, you know, if I can make an office out of your bedroom, will you come home? Because you can work virtually. And she's like, yeah. So she came home for six weeks and it was amazing. I loved it. So yeah, so this um, couch is actually a pullout bed. That's the only thing I bought for this room besides the paper um, to go on the top. But the bottom had a paper I couldn't get off. And so I just painted it black on top of it. And, and then this wallpaper was supposed to be vertical, but I wanted it to look more like wainscoting. So I hung it sideways and put it, the strips long ways in here. And then I got these two things at um, Goodwill for $7 a piece. Aren't they cute? Live simply, love abundantly. And the curtains were here when we bought the house, but they were like really, really yellow. And I thought, well, 
what can I lose? I'll throw it in the laundry with a whole bunch of bleach and see what happens. And they got white again. So yeah, the only thing I had to do was buy the blinds and put them up, which was difficult. Um, but I did it. Um, change the hardware on the things and then touch up all the white paint, pink, the dark paint. And uh, I threw a rug that we had from our basement up here just because the carpeting is like sapphire blue. which doesn't really go with the room, but it's just not in the budget to get new carpeting yet. So yeah, so this just stays in the plant because there's also a, a sign up that says Gabrielle above the closet doors too that she had when she was a kid. Um, so this is her room, which is my office now. <laughs> this is where I do my speech therapy from when I'm working online. Um, and she's okay with it. All right. So becoming sister wise, we're going to do Jennifer Nelson. Thank you for the super sticker. They are so stinking cute. Do you guys get to pick which super, super sticker? Hello, the waving hippo. I appreciate that. Uh, first super on a live stream. Jennifer, thank you. Jennifer, you should, Jennifer comments on a lot of my stuff. And Lynn Skinner, thank you too for the super, super chat. That one I think is. I think the super chats I can like, the super stickers I can't. All right. Aaliyah, you made it. Hi. I'm so glad you're here. Aaliyah is another person that never forgets. Crafty Florida lady. $10. My goodness. So happy you're doing so well. Yeah, let me like that. That's so kind of you to do that again. You did that last time in the um, live chat. I appreciate you. I really do. Fellow crafting scrapbooking ladies. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mary, you have a Gabrielle too? Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful name. And it's spelled G-A-B-I because when she was in preschool and starting to write her name, there were so many I's and E's and so many lines that went up and down and sideways that she was getting confused. So I thought we started calling. We did call her Gabby for short, um, but I would write G-A-B-B-Y on things. And then I thought orthographically, that's going to be hard to teach her to write G-A-B-B-Y and then tell her no more B's, no more Y's. But now we're adding all these other letters. So I changed it to G-A-B-I when she was about four years old, three years old. All right, people. So surprise, if you didn't think we were going to start today, we're starting today. We are. It is prologue day. And then I'll glance up every now and then to take a look and try to scroll back and make and hopefully not um, miss too much. I think I've pretty much caught most of everything, but you guys are chatting with each other so much. It's so cute. I love it. I love it, sister friends. All right. So I will also show you some of the pictures and then we will talk and discuss. And that's how I'm going to make sure we don't get a copyright strike. All right. Although, did you see, I saw the other day, somebody read the book straight and had screenshots of all the pages so you could follow along. I'm like, I don't think you could do that. <laughs> it might not be there for long. Oh, there went the other cat. All right. Here we go. All right, let me pop the cap on this bottle of wine. You know what? <laughs> Y'all are gonna turn me into a Cody and distract me. I was thinking I have a, a, this like huge shirt that I got at a Goodwill or Salvation Army once that is large and it says, oh, not wine time, but um, it's a play on, play on French words. I don't even remember what it is. I haven't worn it in a while, but I was thinking about making it like an evening, like wine time book club, like, and then we can all just share what we're drinking. It doesn't always have to be wine. This is just like, you know, like a crystal light kind of thing. Cranberry, cranberry, cherry, crystal light, with a splash of soda in it. But if you're all having anything good to drink, go ahead and share along. It can be coffee too. Probably decaf because it's late unless you're on the West Coast. All right. All right. What did you miss, Mimi? You missed nothing. Copyright in YouTube is so sketchy. You never know when they will strike. Yeah, isn't that the truth? But they can demonetize a channel for it and withhold their earnings. Yeah, that would stink. 
That would stink. So all of you go <laughs> to Reality TV Breakdown and subscribe to that channel. It's my other channel. That way, if this one ever goes away and you don't see it anymore, that's why. All right. According to my understanding of me reading the information on the copyright stuff, um, that you can show clips of shows and you can have little bits of music um, and you can share things from books, but there, it has to be explained or discussed or something like that. So I'm not going to read it straight through. I'll read a few pages. We'll talk about it. Okay. And if you get bored with me, the cats are putting on a show behind me. Okay. So the prologue is all written by Cody. Oh, bless. Oh, joy. Here we go. I am sitting in a room off the Grand Ballroom in the Beverly Hills Hilton. Is that not the most perfect opening line that Cody would write? <laughs> Let me just point out, it's the Beverly Hills Hilton, not just at a hotel in California getting ready. No, it's very Cody-ish. Oh, I almost can't believe I'm here. I'm a small town boy, not some Hollywood superstar. Still aren't. Okay. This glittering place is a far cry from my current hometown of Lehigh, Utah. The occasion is the Television Critics Association biannual press tour in which networks announce their fall lineup of television shows to the media. On stage, they are playing a clip from a new show on the Discovery Channel. It's about Greenpeace crusaders who are devoted to saving whales. It's a hippie version of that channel's smash hit, Deadliest Catch. This is the kind of show the critics are expecting, the kind of show guaranteed to draw attention without polarizing the audience. My show is a lot more controversial. Mm, I'll disagree with you right there. No, not that your show is um, controversial, but the fact that the networks want non-polarizing content. I think they like polarizing content, quite frankly. I mean, why would you do 90 Day Fiance and... I mean, TLC seems to love polarizing content. Quite, I mean, maybe not Discovery Channel itself, but TLC for sure. Okay. My show is a lot more controversial. It's the first of its kind. Like the Greenpeace activists on stage, I too am taking a stand. I haven't read this. <laughs> Comparing himself to a Greenpeace activist? Jiminy Christmas. All right. But I have no idea how my fight will play out in the court of public opinion. I have no idea how critics, the audience, and the American public are going to react to me. I'm getting nervous. I'm sitting in a chair getting my hair and makeup done. <laughs> Thank you, Cody, for that detail. Makeup? I grew up on a ranch in rural Wyoming. I never, ever thought I'd wear makeup. And yet you seem to really dig it on Halloween when you're putting all that mascara on. Every Halloween. Aren't most of the Halloweens on the show he has mascara on and uh, black eyeliner? Pretty sure. There was like the whole, when they did earth, wind, air, and fire, and he was... What was he like a solar system thing or something? He had uh, it on then. He was a rock star once. He had it on then. The whole Cleopatra and King Tut during COVID had it on then. And it was just for his two kids, but he put it on. Yeah. Never thought you'd wear makeup. Okay. Let alone have a team of people applying it, making sure I'm camera ready. The stylist asks me casually, so what's your show about? Oh, I said, I'm trying to be as offhand as possible. It's about my family. I'm a polygamist and I have four wives. The stylist stops fussing, uh, stops fussing with me for a second. I can see the shock in her eyes. I know it's what she, I know what she's thinking. I'm an average looking dude who looks more like a surfer. <laughs> Sorry, I snorted. <laughs> Than a religious fanatic. How could I be a polygamist? 
He thinks a lot of himself, doesn't he? Honestly, people, isn't that the truth? All right, with Cody, it's all about him. Yes, absolutely. I warned you about that book. You're right, you did, Lori. <laughs> You've already started getting your drink on. I wonder if maybe I'll, next Thursday I just might have something here. <laughs> oh, I'm getting nauseous listening to this, Tina. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> oh, he's a liar. Yes. And the fillers in his speech, the worst. He's not average. He's below average looking. <laughs> it's true. You know, he wasn't bad looking when he married the OG3. When he had his hair cut short, the big smile on that, I think he looked handsome in those pictures. And by the time he married Robin, he went to the whole, like, hair hanging, kind of like he had, like, really bad well water that was very soft that made your hair hang down. Do you remember that? that Seinfeld episode where Kramer and everybody had their hair hanging down because they had the soft water filter on it or something. Anyway, that's what it reminded me of. Like, it's not quite supposed to look like that, but I'm not sure what it's supposed to look like. All right. Um, he's uber creepy. I agree. This is hysterical. You're making me laugh. We're only one page. In. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> not stop rolling my eyes. <laughs> Oh, I made it. I hope I didn't miss too much. No, Marie, we just started. We're literally on page two of the prologue. And I don't think we're getting through the whole prologue today at this rate because I can't handle this already. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to look back down again. You guys can keep chatting with each other and leaving comments. That's great. All right. After I'm done with hair and makeup, I'm ushered back with my wives. We wait anxiously. Okay, no mention of his wives getting made up and how beautiful they are or anything like that. This is this is all about Cody right here, isn't it? I mean, I mean, and maybe later on he mentions it. I don't know. I haven't read this. But as of right now, this is all Cody. Cody talking about Cody and Cody only as if he was the only one there. And then all of a sudden, oh, finally we're mentioning after the hair, the makeup, the conversation. Oh yeah, my wives. We just get ushered back with the wives. That's all he says about them. Okay. We anxiously wait as the 120 second teaser for our show plays on the big screen in the auditorium. They've added some pumping music to the trailer, trying to infuse my family's life with tension and intrigue. <laughs> okay. My heart begins to pound. <laughs> oh, I just saw bright yellow. Nikki Noel, Nikki Noel, thank you for that very generous super chat. That is awesome. Oh, can I do something here too? Can I leave a, oh, I can throw hearts up too. That's pretty cool. I didn't know I could do that. All right. That is very kind of you. Thank you. I appreciate you very much. Okay. That's not necessary, people. You don't have to do it, but I'm touched when you do. Thank you. I don't want anyone to feel bad if they can't um, do super chats or just don't want to. You don't have to. All right, where am I? My heart begins to pound. I'm breathing shallowly. What have I done? I'm about to expose my family to the world. I'm about to do the very thing most polygamous families live in fear of. I'm about to go public. I know that I'm putting my family at risk. My wives and I could lose our jobs. Our children could be tormented at school, but I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of living like a second-class citizen. I'm tired of lying about my life. I have a wonderful family, a perfectly happy family with beautiful wives and beautiful children. I don't want us to live the rest of our days in fear. I am about to ask America to accept us. I wonder if he really believed that Did, when he, when he, when he uh, wrote that in here. Did he really believe those words? Because... I mean, maybe, maybe they were so sheltered, but he wasn't that sheltered. He didn't join the AUB church until after his mission. So he was what, 24, 22, 23, something like that. So he knew what it's like. He went to public school and that people are very accepting in America. We really are. Mm, okay. Um, I think he's being overdramatic for the book's sake. That's just my personal opinion. 
It's 1.40 in the morning in England. Marie, <gasps> thank you for being on here. Do you need to go to sleep? If you fall asleep, I understand. I completely get it. Are, are you just one of those insomniacs that this helps you at night? If it wasn't for Christine, they never would have had a show. Preach, Lynn. That's so true. I have a video on that. You want If you want to go look it up, there would be no, it's under my Christine Speaks series. There would be no show without Christine. He was after a TLC pay paycheck. Absolutely. Cody's full of it. Tina, right. Absolutely. Ugh. Jenny's channel has so many funny clips. I love it. You're so kind, Mary. Thank you. Um, did the show already go on Oprah when it was written? I don't know, sleuths, but I'll tell you this was published. Maybe you can Google it while I'm reading. This book was published. This is like one of the original ones. These pages are like yellow. 2012, it was published. So when did the show start again? Did it start around 2012? Didn't it? Did they do this book right away at the beginning, like after the first season? Could have. They could have, maybe. I don't know why 20 or 2008's in my head, but that might be from something else. All right, I'm going to go on. All right. I grasp my wife's hands in an informal prayer circle. We draw strength from one another and from our faith of, in God. We renew our commitment to our beliefs. I steady myself. The world is ready, I think, to hear our story. The, the world. Actually, this has gone around the world, but probably because it's so scandalous. The world is ready to accept us for who we are and not shun us for our beliefs. I drop my wife's hands as we are called to the stage. Okay, well, that doesn't make any sense. He just got finished saying, I don't want us to live the rest of our days in fear. Um, I'm about to ask America to accept us. He was worried about his kids and going public. The Everybody was going to lose their jobs. The kids were going to get tormented. And then like four lines later, he says, I steady myself. The world is ready, I think, to hear our story. The world is ready to accept us for who we are and to not shun us for our beliefs. I drop my wife's hands and we are called to the stage. That was really quick how he got over it. <laughs> Honestly, he hasn't even been up on stage. I haven't even announced that it's a show that's going to come out on TV. And he's already gone to full acceptance and knows that America's ready for him. Oh, my goodness. Let me look at the chat here for a second. Um, I thought they were in Vegas when they did the book. That could be. They were not in Lehigh for very long. They could have done the book when they were in Vegas before they were actually in the cul-de-sac even. Um, someone had to have written that for him. He is incapable of writing so coherently. Well, he's certainly incapable of speaking coherently. We know that for a fact, but I wouldn't doubt that there was a ghost writer here helping him. Um... All right. Uh, I think the show started in 2010. Okay. What did I say this was? 2012. So this is two years. So they probably wrote it. Yeah, if it was published in 2012, they, I'm sure they took at least a year to write it. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe. <laughs> maybe as I go on, I'll rethink that and think that he did it on a weekend. <laughs> May I puke now? Yes, Scarlett. Let her go right ahead, Jennifer. All right. The book came out after Oprah. Robin writes about it later. Oh, does she? She she addresses that. Oh, that'll be fun. Maybe the book deal helped for Vegas. Somebody, that could be um Crystal Panda. I uh somebody told me that TLC got, got a cut of it. That TLC be prepared for a bunch of lies because TLC was involved in the writing of the book. Um but they don't have any, it, it's not in the, they don't mention it as like being a, a ghostwriter or a producer or anything. It just mentions Simon & Schuster, which is a pretty large book company. Um, but I, yeah, I could see them not being able to 
figure it out and just using it doesn't mean they have to be there i guess i just expected it to also say in conjunction with tlc or something like that that they were like partly helping produce it or whatever but okay let's go on we're never gonna get through this all right let me introduce you to the real face of polygamy when people hear the phrase Mormon fundamentalist, they probably think about a small subset of our population, the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, for too long, this organization and the handful of abusive men who ran it had been the poster children of polygamy in America. Until recently, the FLDS was run by Warren Jeffs. Oh, what an awful man, right? who has been found guilty of child sexual assault and is now serving a life sentence in prison. I followed all of that and was fascinated by it. Honestly, did that all happen before Sister Wives began? That could be what spurred me on to start to watch this. I do know that because it was called Sister Wives, Cody thinks it's his show, but it was called Sister Wives. I was fascinated when I saw the previews and them wearing regular clothes and all that to hear their story, really. So it is interesting how it's kind of morphed into him thinking it's his show and his uh, wives are just supporting characters in this whole thing. I mean, look at this book. Cody's doing the whole prologue and he's just mentioned his wives in passing. He hasn't even said how many he has or what their names are or anything. Just wives in general. This is all about him. How did he do that? It's What's the book called? Becoming Sister Wives. All right. I guess prologues can be written by other people, so I'll, I'll let it go. Let's continue. Uh, we're talking about Warren Jeffs here. He ruled his organization with an iron fist, creating a client rampant with abuse and fear. He has not only tolerated, but also promoted child brides. Um. He summarily, summarily, I don't think I've ever used that word before. Maybe it's a word. He summarily reassigned the wives of men he deemed unworthy to new husbands. These are not my beliefs. This is not my world. While we share a belief in the principle of celestial plural marriage, I want to make it clear that the practices of the FLDS have no place in my universe. My universe. <laughs> we belong to a different religious community, one that has several thousand members worldwide. In, I mean, the fact that, I'm sorry, the fact that he just used in my universe and then he also went summarily summarily s-u-m-m-a-r-i-l-y i don't doubt that it's a word but I, he had to have looked that up to put that in here or he heard it that week and then incorporated it just like that last video did you guys see that did you see the squirrel video wasn't that amazing this is the video that i think it just went live today i i i, I uploaded it a day or two ago but i think i set it to go live today when he kept saying the the cul-de-sac theory, which I've never heard before either, but then like the plig barn or the one house theory. And I was so confused. Why are we calling it a theory? I just didn't understand. And I'm like, and then what's the cul-de-sac theory? What's that got to do with it? These are things he's never mentioned before in this interview. And then I realized in the question to him, which was only half asked, it never really, the full question was never asked because he interrupted with all this information. In the question, the guy said, well, you're a man with a lot of experience, I noticed, but very little theories. So, and you can see Cody's face react like, <laughs> okay, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> but it's like eyebrows went up, like, I have very little theory. Like, you know, like you just insulted me here. And so he interrupted the question because he couldn't handle the insult. He had to start giving his explanation. And in his explanation, he had to use the terms cul-de-sac theory and one house theory. They're not theories at all. He completely misused the word. But he was so, it was his way of trying to get back. He was so insulted by the fact that the guy said that he had very little theories. Oh, I got two. Let me show you. Okay, I'm sorry. I digress. If you've seen the video already. I just, that was amazing to me. All right. And that was like my third time going through the script that it actually like hit me. 
boy, if you really sit there and spent like a week on just an answer, you could probably die. I mean, I won't. I never will. It makes me crazy as much as I dissect it anyway. Okay, let me look at what people are saying, and then I will get back to reading some more. Um, oh my God, Scarlett, too funny. I don't know what she said, but she is. She writes a lot of funny stuff in my stuff, and Linda's too. Um, could you imagine if Cody typed like he actually talked? That's what Lynn said. How could you? Oh, it'd be impossible to get through. That's why I have here, if you notice in the last video, and I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. I printed out the transcript to that Mormonism live interview. And I thought, well, this is going to help me because I'm like pausing, stopping, pausing, stopping, writing down everything everybody says. I'm like, oh, here it's all written. Well, transcripts are just like, I don't know, AI generated or something like that. So all of the grammar is not necessarily in there and I can't even follow it. I don't know where a thought begins and ends. Like I have to listen to him where he kind of puts in a sl slight pause to realize where he intends to end a sentence. There was like a whole line and a half of this that literally was one sentence of his. Insane. Insane. So that's what it would look like. <laughs> that transcript is what it would look like. And let me tell you, it's horrible. Nobody wants to try to read that. All right, I'm moving on. While we share our belief in the principle, okay, we talked about that. We belong to a different religious community, one that has several thousand members worldwide. In our, fa in our faith, incest and spousal abuse are serious crimes, hmm. which when discovered result in immediate legal action. Um, in the in the next updated edition of this, they need to change that to incest and physical spousal abuse because spousal abuse happened in that um, marriage relationship with Mary and with Christine. I think Janelle's probably the only one I can't, although at the end, he was terrible to her too. Oh. I almost wanted to crawl under when he was yelling at her on the couch at Christmas time. I was just like was shivering. The intensity of his voice was frightening. Okay. And that's when cameras were on and he knew it. Mm -hmm. You can always tell how people act behind closed doors based on how they act in public or how they act when they know a camera's on and it's going to be broadcast to everybody. Okay. Could not control his temper. I am sure... When most people think of Mormon fundamentalists, they think of long, modest dresses and old-fashioned hairstyles, something you might see in an old Western movie. This only covers a fraction of polygamists. If we weren't on TV, you wouldn't be able to pick my family out of a crowd. I mean, with the exception, he has four wives, but oh, okay. We dress like anyone else, maybe a tiny bit more modestly, but definitely modernly. Yes, this is debatable. <laughs> I don't know. Our kids go to public school. They watch TV. They go to the movies. They play computer games. They go to parties and they listen to popular music. They play sports, wear makeup, sometimes too much for my liking, and participate in school activities. Basically, my family is not at all, not all that different from yours. Our sect is one of the more liberal branches of Mormon fundamentalism. Unlike other fundament fundamentalist Mormons, we accept the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as a legitimate faith. Oh, the other ones don't accept the LDS Church as a legitimate faith? The other branches of uh, Mormon fundamentalism? That's interesting. I thought that was a... I thought they were all a branch of LDS. So it was like LDS plus and like his is LDS plus polygamy. I didn't know there were any that completely disowned the LDS church. So they wouldn't be Mormon fundamentalists then if they're, because Mormon is sort of like the slang nickname for LDS, right? Or the formal name, former name before they were LDS maybe. I feel like I heard that story before, but I don't remember why. That's well, interesting. I'm going to have to research that. I'm not saying he's lying. I'm just saying I, I never knew that. I would like to know what they believe in the other 
um, divisions if they don't believe in the LDS church. All right, let me glance over here again. Jenny's take on Cody's Mormon interview is the best. Oh, that's so nice of you. I am sure some people hate it because it's so meticulously broken down that it's got to drive some people nuts. And I often will replay the clip so that people can hear it. Cause after I break it down, like rather than having for people to go back, I'll just insert it again to listen to it. So it could drive people to drink. It really could, you know, have your drink on before you watch the next Mormonism. Month. And I'm not actually, I haven't even watched the next sec section yet. Cause I know the next section, cause I saw ahead in the transcript is I saw the word diesel jeans. <laughs> So I know that's next, but I haven't watched it at all. I have not watched it all the way through. I was um, redecorating my son's bedroom um, for like two or three months after he went to college this year. Poor kid had this crappy old kid bedroom until he was like 20 years old. And, he, you know, he's a boy. He's like, I don't care. <laughs> so like, I made it really nice, which was actually really cute because he came home and then they gave me a big hug. And he's like, mom, it's awesome. Thank you. I love you. And he's not the kid that says I love you or ever gives hugs. So it was so touching. And then I heard him talking to his girlfriend on FaceTime later in the night or probably Discord. That's what they are all are on now. And I overheard him saying as I was walking by the thing, he goes, I think she's trying to get me to move back home. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little. The truth is the room had to be redone. Like we could never sell the house with as horrible as the room was exactly as it was when we moved in 15, 17 years ago, however many years ago. So anywho, um, why did I start telling that story? Here I go again, turning into Cody. Uh, oh, the whole Mormonism live thing. I don't know. Somehow it came off of that. Oh, that's when I first listened to the Mormonism live interview. I was painting the room and, you know, just, you know, putting up new blinds and all kinds of stuff in the room. And I was listening to it and I would stop and like take notes. Cause I'm like, Oh, I gotta do a video on this. And I found myself stopping so much that I just tried to start to listen to it. But then I started getting really frustrated. <laughs> and when you do meticulous work and I was doing a lot of really meticulous work and painting the ceiling fan and everything like me re I literally did every inch of the room. I thought I need to listen to some fun, like Brown's talk or something. I probably listened to sister wife stuff. Actually, I don't remember what I changed to, but I remember turning it off. And so I'd never heard it from this point on at all. So it's going to be new to me when I watch it, but in the next couple of days, I'll watch more and then get another video going. Okay. Um, may I puke now? I think I scrolled back too far. Um, LOL, Jenny, is you're looking for it to make sense. Yeah, wh what am I thinking? What am I thinking? None of this makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, Aaliyah. Mary, I told Jenny she should have Cody arrested for assaulting her ears when she's trying to decipher what he's saying in the podcast. That made me laugh out loud, really. I remember when I read that. I'm like, yeah, that was an assault on my ears. That's not right. I wonder if I can prosecute. I could prosecute and take part of Coyote Pass. That's just what I want. Give me a suction of Coyote Pass and we're, we'll be equal. Um, I want to, not that I have the money to do this, but... In my dream world, I want to get like a whole bunch of fun people who love sister wives and go stay at um, Christine's new Airbnb. I don't know how many people it holds. I haven't even looked it up online, but on somebody's somewhere on social media, I saw the posting of some pictures of it. And I thought, well, that looks fun. And I don't know what else I would do when I was there, but I thought it would be a fun place to like do a podcast from and kind of show around. I'm sure other people are already doing it. So by the time I get around to doing everything, it's so old news. This is not, this is not breaking news channel folks. This is like a reflective. This is my opinion channel for sure. Somebody the other day said they read the, 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 um, thumbnail and I don't remember which video it was on, but they said that they were disappointed because they thought there was new news that I was going to share and there wasn't new news in it. And I'm like, I really don't intend for it to be clickbait. I really don't. I intend for the thumbnail to represent something that's in that video. But 
um, whoever it was, I let them know you're, you need to find another channel for breaking news. I don't have time. I've got other jobs. This is like a hobby for me. So I don't have time to keep up on all the social media stuff. Maybe someday, maybe a year from now, God willing, I'll be able to like pair back on both or one or both of the other jobs and spend more time doing this and, and be on top of breaking news, but I don't have the time to do it now. All right. Um, Tina guy, thank you for the super chat. Jenny, I say we pull the cloak of charity over this prologue. <laughs> oh, who was it? Somebody told me that's what I should call the book club, that this is the cloak of charity club. Let me know if you're interested, if you want me to do that. We could do the Thursday night cloak of charity club with all my sister friends, sister, we sister friends, come gather to the Cloak of Charity Club as we read the book. That, that would be funny. Anyway, oh, there's so many, so many Cody-isms that we could use, I suppose. Thank you, Tina. I appreciate it. Tina, you always make me smile. Okay, back to the book. Um, celestial plural marriage isn't something we take lightly or take for granted. It's a calling, something we are summoned to by God. It's a commandment in our scripture, fundamental to our belief system. Its intention and design is specific to our personal development and spiritual growth. I wonder how that works. How does that make yourself have personal development and spiritual growth to be in polygamy? I mean, I guess if you just keep accepting it, you know, that whole, um, um, Oh, what is it? What is it called? The, the, about Joseph Smith's wives. Um, they are, um, oh, I'm so far back in the chat. What's that called? The, somebody, you can tell me what it is. Um, when you're, it's, it's, you're more spiritually for being lonely and polygamy. You're more spiritually closer to God, and it's like almost the the implication that the more lonely you are, that the more holy you are. What is that called? Sacred loneliness. Thank you very much. Sacred loneliness. Yes. All right. Um. So maybe that's where spiritual growth comes from. But there's no spiritual growth for Cody. No, no sacred loneliness there. Although he claims he's the loneliest of them all, right? Do you remember that? Ugh, I'm not going back there. Let me keep reading. Not all people in our sect enter into polygamy despite their belief in the doctrine. I find that really interesting. Why would you join this sect of the AUB church? if you're not going to practice polygamy, because that seems to be the main thing they talk about. We talked about that in another video just recently, how Cody said it's almost all about polygamy in their church services. So anyway, some never find the right partners with whom to live the principle. However, when the opportunity for plural marriage is placed before us, and when we are called to it, it seems wise to accept. I don't really want to step on toes when it comes to people's religious beliefs, honestly. I believe in freedom of speech. I believe in freedom of religion. However, this whole calling to it is confusing to me. Because if, if God really were calling you to it, he wouldn't call you into something that was a disaster and would end in divorce. Maybe he in hindsight, would remove that line from the book. Religion is by nature elitist. Everyone wants to believe that his way is the right way. Too many people, regardless of their faith, are small-minded enough to imagine that their beliefs, their doctrines, and their rituals are the only way to be saved or to know God. I am not self-centered enough. <laughs> I don't even know what the rest of the sentence is. I love it. it begins that way, though. I am not self-centered enough to entertain these thoughts. In no way do I imagine that my family members are the only people who got it right. God speaks to each of us in his own way. He calls a person in that person's language, 
and reaches individuals in terms they will understand. What I'm called to do is not what you are called to do. I don't consider followers of other religion any less worthy. Oh, of another religion. I was going to say, that doesn't make sense. I don't consider followers of another religion any less worthy of in God's eyes or in mine. I don't believe that's what's appropriate for one person is necessarily appropriate for all. The principle is my calling. It's probably not yours, and that's fine with me. Well, thank you. Thank you for that, Cody. How kind of you. How gracious. Let me scroll back and see if there's, I mean, there's a lot I missed, but maybe I can just touch on a few comments here that just pop up. Robin said that two of her goals were to be on Oprah and to write a book. I didn't know that. So it's weird that she had the same goal as Rachel Hollis. Huh? She's kind of self, she's kind of the self-help guru. If you haven't heard of her before now, I've heard of Rachel Hollis. Didn't, wasn't she a self-help guru? That was, is she the one that was like, basically it was all about marriage and then she ended up divorced. Was that Rachel Hollis? I know I've heard of her. Um, hugs are better as they get older. Right, Marie? My son is 36. Hugs me every time he sees me. Isn't that the best? My son is, he's getting better. He was never, I mean, he wasn't a clingy, lovey, huggy kid ever his whole life. Never. So it doesn't surprise me that he became a teenager and still wasn't. But I was so jealous of all those mama's boys out there. <laughs> I didn't get one. I have two girls who are very close to me very close. So it's not like, um, I, I don't have love for my children and I know deep down inside he loves me, but now all of a sudden in the past year, I hear the, I love you, the love yous and hugs and thank you for how you raised me. He's like starting, he goes like, man, I talked to so many people and realized that they come from so many messed up situations. And most of my friends don't even talk to their parents. And so it's nice that like, he's kind of seeing like, yeah, he goes, I just assume everybody had the same kind of life that I had. I'm like, no, I made it good. I made it good for you. Appreciate me. <laughs> All right. I didn't say that. Um, I'd love to see Mary and Janelle hire a forensic accountant. A hundred percent agree. hundred percent. I think that would get ratings so through the roof. I mean, they could make it a whole spinoff. Or if they sued them and it was just Court TV, I mean, Court TV's ratings would go nuts if they took them to court to sue them for finance. Oh, it would be amazing. I just don't know if any of the three of them have it in them to do it. I just don't know. He's going to have to really screw them over bad for them to get to that point. And I don't think any of them are there yet because I think Christine's just moved on and washed her hands of it. She's like, too, but Janelle just gave all her money away. So she would be the one. I pray she does. I pray she does. I just hope her kids, I, Maddie would be the one. Maddie would be the one that tells her you need to do it. <laughs> all right. Now we sound like a new cult. I don't even know what's all going on in the chat here. I can't, I'm skipping over so many, but I love that. We're our own cult. We're the sister friend cult. Uh, all right. I love that. Sister friends road trip. Toot toot. Alia <laughs> uh, said, I think that part of Mormonism live podcast about Robin is coming up where Cody says something stupid, shocker, and says, we can just edit that out later <laughs> on a live stream. I did hear about that. That's amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. That's going to make me giggle. Even though I know it's coming, it's going to make me giggle. I know it will. Uh, I heard that Christine's Airbnb has Cody's picture all over the place. <gasps> Peekaboo. I hope not. That. Why would she do that? I hope not. I hope that's just a bad rumor. I know there is... TLC and sister wife stuff all around, but I think that she's kind of catering to that clientele. That's why she put it all around there. Um, this is a good cult. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a good cult. We're cult light. Or 
somebody pointed out, he said cult light, and it was actually spelled cult light in this transcript too, but um, cult like, I think that might be what it was. Um, but it didn't sound like he said that, and the, and the transcript picked it up as light too. He sounded like he punched the T on it, but who knows? I mean, you can't trust anything, Cody says. All right. Oh, you all are so funny. You're going back and forth to each other. After this, I'm going to sit down and read all of this because I don't have a chance to do it now. Ew, why would she put that picture up? I know. I can't believe she would do it. She dislikes him so much. And it's sister wives. It's not Cody and his wives. It's not me and my three wives or something like that. I don't know. Okay, I'm going on. Um... This is not so exciting, quite frankly. It's like his like little bit of preaching here about his faith. Building a complex family from four separate marriages has its challenges. My wives and I had to learn to be understanding, kind, compassionate, and patient. We have had to develop ourselves morally and ethically. Were you morally and ethically sound when you were hooking up with Robin before you were married to her? What do we all think happened in that white convertible? All right. The demands on a plural family are far greater than those on a monogamous couple. How can he say that back in 2012 and then just recently, as I'm analyzing this Mormonism live video, he said, nobody told me, nobody, nobody, no one shared with them because he was so upset that nobody shared it was going to be difficult. He says right here, he knew it was going to be difficult. I mean, common sense tells you it was going to be difficult. Man, he lies here, then he lies there. Oh my goodness. He can't keep straight his lies. All right. The demands on a plural family are far greater than those on a monogamous couple. Since we have to consider the sensitivity of other wives and other marriages on an everyday basis, plural marriage consistently challenges us. It makes us confront our shortcomings and overcome them. We have to learn to handle our jealousy, contain our aggression. Ew. Ew. Okay. Cody has nothing to be jealous of, right? He's the dude with the three slash four wives. We have to learn to handle our jealousy, that demeaning talking down voice. He's talking about his wives. Oh, it just drives me nuts when he does that. It, we have to do this. And he's not part of it. And he knows it. It's this way of like pointing out other people's errors. We have to learn to, so, which means he's going to go on. And he's still talking about them. We have to learn to handle our jealousy, contain our aggression. We have to check our selfishness. There is no room for ego in plural marriage. <laughs> oh, man. He's just pointing that sentence directly at his wives. He's pointing because, I mean, there's no way he can say that with a straight face about himself. But it comes right after these. We have to do this and we have to do that, right? Like you talk to a little kid, like, we have to sit on the potty now, you know? Ugh, Cody. Although we know these things, although we, here we go again. Although we know these things, we are by no means perfect. Each member of my family has his or her <laughs> flaws. Every day, we must work toward a higher level of communication with one another. In the end, our acceptance of the doctrine of plural marriage allows us to transcend our limitations and become enlightened. What? It challenges us to be the best version of ourselves in this lifetime. Well, all I can say is I see the OG3 now living their best lives ever. Ever outside of plural marriage. They were not living their best lives in plural marriage. No way. No way. Going on. I know people probably misinterpret what I do. They probably think I'm wife hoarding, that I'm satisfying my 
carnality at the expense of my wife's feelings. I know there are people, excuse me. (coughs) I know there are people out there who assume I'm some kind of macho pig. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, we do. (laughs) Yep. Interesting, the insight he has, even before it all became public and people were saying all this stuff about him. Well, this couldn't be further from the truth, (laughs) according to you. I mean, according to a narcissist, of course. I understand that this misconception comes from the perceived imbalance in the practice. Why can I have multiple wives, yet my wives cannot have multiple husbands? Hmm, good question. Because a man designed this religion and he didn't think that was a good idea. This is his carnal dream when he created polygamy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to insult those. I know I have people who are in polygamy that follow my channel. Those of you who are, if you could just write me and tell me if yours is successful and if it looks anything like Cody's or is it more like, I used to follow that other family that was that were polygamists that had a show. I really liked them too. Because I liked him. I never really liked Cody. He was always kind of creepy, but I just thought, eh, whatever, I'm here for the sister wives. But were, his name was Brady, Brady something. And I want to say his show was called My Five Wives. So see, that would be about him. I mean, it would be about the wives, but it's my five wives. So from the perspective of Brady, as opposed to a show called Sister Wives or a book called Becoming Sister Wives. Anyway, apparently one of those five wives had, um, was kind of in a situation sort of like Christine, whose father was high up and apparently didn't do nice things. So they ended the show, but, um, that actually looked like polygamy working ish. I mean, they still talked about jealousies and and that kind of, I mean, that's always going to be there. It's just got to be part of it. Um, but compared to the Brown family, they seem to be working a little bit better. All right. Let's see here. I'm kind of a macho pig. Yeah. I understand that this misconception comes from the perceived imbalance in the practice. Hmm? What does that mean? I understand that the misconception comes from a perceived imbalance in the practice. Oh, from... Well, it's not perceived. There is an imbalance. Perceived. That word doesn't belong there. There is an imbalance. There's one husband and four wives. How can that not be? (laughs) But that's not a balance. There's no way you can put one on one side and four on the other and call it balanced. Okay, moving on. Why can I have multiple wives, yet my wives cannot have multiple husbands? Okay. Oh, so I read that before. Did I just glance over that line? Mm. In the first place, this is like me doing a Mormonism live review. In the first place, this is not our commandment. Second, when my wives are asked if they would take a second husband, they empathetically answer not interested. Perhaps there are people out there for whom taking plural husbands is a viable lifestyle. Perhaps there is a religion where there is a sacred way of life but it is not our faith. Um, yeah. Isn't there a show out now about sister husband or brother husbands? Isn't it called brother husbands? I, I have never seen it. I haven't even seen it advertised, but I swear I've heard about it. Each of my wives has come into our family on our own free will. Choosing to join a plural family has been their choice, their preferences. It's something they prayed over, then sought out, of their own volitions. Believe it or not, some of them made it, made, some of them made the first move, asking to join my family even before I proposed. Didn't he at one point say they all have to ask to, like, it's improper for the guy to go after? I thought all of them had to make the move. That's the right thing. I guess with the exception of Mary being the first one. Next week, Jenny, remember to have a bucket nearby. (laughs) Yes. 
<laughs> Maybe you need to just stop and vomit. This is true. <laughs> oh my goodness. Cody's father called him into it. Yeah, Cody's father became a polygamist while Cody was on his two-year mission. And Cody came back and his dad was like, oh, by the way, we're no longer members of the LDS church. We've left. So I guess the whole family got kicked out when his dad joined uh, the AUB. And then Cody shortly afterward joined the AUB too, after he looked into it and realized it was for him too. I, I heard that somewhere. Uh, his dad was mean and violent, according to the cousin. Yeah, Ben, that cousin, doesn't have kind things to say about Cody's dad, um, who is also Ben's grandfather. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe I liked him in the first episodes. Yeah, he wasn't that bad. He was still kind of creepy. He was he was not creepy. He was goofy. He acted like a little kid. And that bothered me. But I really just thought that was for the cameras. Like, I didn't believe that was really him. I thought he was going to settle down and be normal over time. And eventually he never really did. And then eventually he became creepy Cody. All right. Um, I'd watch a show of Robin with her first J-O-B. Isn't that the truth? Robin flicking, flipping burgers. Do you want fries with that? That would be amazing. Uh, or just watching her come home at night and trying to deal with cleaning a house and tending for kids after working like most American women do, working all day and then raising their kids. And Oh, she has no idea. Oh. Okay. Continue reading so we can get through this tonight because, oh my gosh, are we going to get through this? I need to keep, I'm going to plug along here, people. Here I go. Okay. Each of my wives has come to our family of her own free will, choosing to join a plural family that has been their choice, their preference. It's something they prayed over, then sought out, out of then sought out of their own volitions. Believe it or not, some of them made the first move. Okay, I read this, sorry, to join the family even before I proposed. When I say I love each of my wives wholly passionately and eternally, I am telling the truth. He put that in print. Holy, passionately, and eternally. Well, eternally because that's their belief. But holy and passionately? I never saw him be that passionate with Christine. And Janelle, I can't figure that one out. Sometimes I think the two of them got it on like crazy. And then other times I think that it was just like a a friendship sharing time between them. I can't, I can't, I can't put my finger on that relationship. And there was a time not that long ago where Christine said, I'm not going to have, I'm going to leave because I'm not going to have the relationship that he has with Janelle, that she's okay with it. So that implied that there was nothing going on between them. I don't know. Maybe they, they used to be freaky and then <laughs> It wore off after Robin came. I don't know. This is ridiculous, though. I believe that with each of my wives, I share a destiny. And that together, we five adults were predetermined to be one family. We believe on a very deep level that we belong together in an absolute fashion. We are meant to be. Wow. Those are some strong words for a man that abandoned three of his four wives and claims he's never loved them. Never. Ugh. So how can I love four women? Good question. Cause you said you don't. It's a fair question and it's an easy one to answer. Loving them is simple. It's like breathing while waking up in the morning, putting one foot in front of the other. It's one of those things you do unconsciously. Something so deeply ingrained in your psyche and your way of being that you never question it. Oh, my word. I don't think my husband would even write that about me. I think this is him like pouring it on and just, again, part of the whole we're faking it at the beginning. I think this book's going to be a lot of faking it. It's hard to explain how I love my wives to someone who is not inside the principle. 
The simple analogy is of a mother who is pregnant with her second child and worries that she will not love this one as much as she loved her first. It's an honest fear, but on the day her new baby is born, she loves it as much as her firstborn. She loves it independently of her firstborn. She loves both of her children because they are her children, but she loves them individually for their different qualities. She loves one because he's rem a remarkable athlete. That's not a reason to love this one's sweet. This one's kind. This one's loving. This one's athletic. <laughs> All right. But it's probably what he thinks about some of his sons, though. Oh, I like the wrestlers. Yeah, Hunter. He's, he's cool. She loves one because he's a remarkable athlete, but she doesn't love him any less because he's a terrible student. Interesting analogies here. Even as she loves the other for her sense of humor and her scholarly habits. Oh, she gets to be smart and funny. The other one is dumb and just athletic. <laughs> nice comparison of your kids. All right. It's the same way with my wives, but on a much more intimate level. I love them for different reasons, for their different strengths and their different passions and talents. I love them for their weaknesses and their humanity, but I don't love one more or less than the others. Liar. That is not true. Being in love with four women is easy. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm going to get through this book, people. This is all lies. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait till we get to the chapters written by the wives. But it's not easy at the same time. Since my wives are so different from one from one another and so independent, each of my marriages is distinct and each is, has its dynamic in its own way. I can't always pinpoint the moment I fell in love with each of my individual wives, and I don't always feel that love all the time. But the love is so deep, I can't imagine being without it. I don't, okay. It's so deep that you can't feel it? doesn't make any sense. Our bond is the kind of thing you know you need for the rest of your life, not in a codependent way, but in a way that bonds us so deeply that when I have been away from any one wife too long, I feel an emotional ache. <laughs> Doubt that. You guys, have you read this? I'm telling you, this is first for me. If you're away from any one of your wives too long, you feel an emotional ache and let you chose to be away from all three of them. One that just gave birth to your 13th child to go on an 11 day honeymoon with Robin. He wrote this after the honeymoon. Robin exists. Oh, he's such a liar. Okay. To be honest, I am not sure if any one of my wives could fulfill all my needs, nor do I believe that I am fulfilling all of theirs. Janelle and I can talk business. With Christine, I can enjoy the lightness of being together. With Mary, the world is structured and organized. Her house is peaceful and in order. That's not a nice thing to say. He doesn't talk really about, I guess the nicest thing he said is about Christine, that it's light. I enjoy the lightness of being together. But then he always said that she complained a lot and it was difficult to be with her. So that doesn't really make sense. He didn't talk about like their character, the character of their, I mean, nothing about love, compassion, joy, fruits of the spirit, anything about like watching them be kind to each other, or, you know, how they raise the kids or the time they, I mean, like all those nice things. One, he can talk business with the other one has a lightness of being together. And the other one is structured, organized, and has a peaceful house in order. When Robin came into the family, oh, this will all be good, she brought about an emotional honesty that required me to start dealing with things that I'd avoided. Interesting. What does that mean? What is an emotional honesty that I was all of a sudden emotionally honest with myself that I didn't love these three women, but I only loved her. Maybe. I don't know. A lot of people wonder if there's a plan or a system for taking a new wife. If there is, I've yet to see it. The only requirement is that I have a spiritual connection with a woman I'm considering courting. 
and that she feel connected not only to me, but also to my family. In some cases, uh, oh, let's look at this for a second. The only requirement is that I have a spiritual connection with the woman that I'm considering courting and that she feel connected not only to me, but also to my family. But there's nothing about the rest of the wives being connected to her or wanting her to come in. Isn't that interesting? Because that all changed with Robin. When Christine was opposed to it, he just ignored her. In some cases in our faith, the woman makes the first move. If she feels drawn to a certain family or a man, she can make her interests known through her father, but she must be willing to join herself, not only to her potential husband, but also to his wives. Of course, the man must have the permission of his wives. Oh, here we go. Now he's going to mention it. To consider a courtship. After all, the woman he wishes to court is going to be as much a part of his wife's lives, lives as she will be his. If my wives didn't want me to pursue a relationship with someone, I'd have no choice but to obey their wishes. My first duty is to them. All right, I'm going to stop it there for today. I mean, we're almost done anyway, but I'll, I'll read the rest of it and go into chapter one next time. But let me just pause there for a second. Of course, a man must have the permission of his wives to consider a courtship. After all, the woman he wishes to court is going to be as much a part of their wives as his. If my wives didn't want me to pursue a relationship, do we believe this? I do not see anything in season one that shows that Christine was at all excited about this. I will say, you guys know that I recently joined um, McKelty's Patreon, and she is starting to do a whole season watch because she said that they never watched a bunch of them growing up. So she's seen episodes, but it's sporadic. So she definitely never saw it all the way through. There's some episodes she hadn't seen at all. And Tony had never watched the show. So he, she and Tony are sitting down together, which I didn't believe at first until you see his reaction. He is shocked. He keeps pointing out how many times Christine has been saying, he goes, she's been saying it since back then. She's been, you know, he's pointing out like she didn't like Robin from the beginning. She didn't like the idea of another sister wife. Like he's kind of shocked watching this. McKelty doesn't have much to say. She just kind of goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. but he, he seems sort of flabbergasted by it. Um, I kind of skip through it quickly because I don't turn it on and watch it. I don't have the time. Um, and I pretty much go through and just wait to see during the commercials they talk. So I just want to hear what they have to say between the commercials. So I kind of skip. But every now and then, as I'm skipping forward on my laptop, I'll see that he or she are talking as the show's going. Because you can't really hear the show and you can't see it either. And then I'll, I'll watch it. And I notice that Tony is really shocked at how much Christine. So I don't, I don't think she ever wanted Robin. I mean, she came out and said it, but in the end she acquiesced and she just like towed the line and said, yeah, you know, I, I believe it is right. You know, I've come to believe that this is meant to be. She was never happy. She wasn't happy when he announced it to all the kids in the living room. Christine's just sort of staring off. Like it was never a happy occasion for her. So these words are just lies. He's just trying to make himself look good and make polygamy look good, which I guess goes hand in hand, right? With what we just recently saw on that last video where uh, on um, the Mormonism Live that he said that they were faking it for the camera. They were faking it for the book too. We're going to have to really cipher through this and decide what's real and what's not real. And I'm not sure there might not be a lot of real <laughs> if Cody at least is contributing a lot. All right, let me go back and take a look at this chat before we cut this off. Oh, you all are so funny. All right. Uh, it was Brady and his five wives. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know why I like them. Yes, the Brady family. Oh, it was the Brady, the Brady family. Was his name Brady or was her last name Brady? I think his name was Brady. I think his name was Brady if I remember it. I like them. <laughs> I don't know why. But I enjoyed that show. Um, why did they end that show? Christine, because um, I love My Five Wives. Yes, Colleen, right? It was a good show. Um, 
because the one, the one with the big, the, with the rounder face, with the dark hair, um, the really pretty, they, they were all pretty. Um, the rounder face who was like self-conscious about her weight. I don't remember their names at all. It's been a while since I saw the show, but that one, apparently her father, I don't think it was grandfather. I think it was her father. Someone, someone in her family was higher up in the AUB church and there was a scandal involved with him. And I don't know what it was. I don't remember. I, I, I may have heard it in the past and I can't recall it, but yeah, there was something scandalous that happened. And so TLC just dropped it and dropped the whole show. You know, there's a question on whether Christine's, uh, father was really involved in anything. I don't think so. He got out of it, right? He always wanted her to go to college. Like he seemed pretty liberal and then eventually he was gone. But I think her grandfather might have done some questionable things. I think he may have had underage brides, but they don't talk about it on the show because if they did, they'd have to cancel the show. Michelle, you listen to Mormonism Live. You like Bill in the Radio Free Mormon. Yeah, there's also another podcast that I watch that is very similar to it, but it's just one gentleman. And I stumbled upon it because I was watching at the time Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And one of the gals there wrote a book who left the Mormon church called Bad Mormon. And so somehow I must have been following something or watched something with Salt Lake City. And it popped up on a thumbnail um, that showed that she was doing an interview of the book. And I thought, oh, I didn't, I didn't feel like reading the book. I heard it wasn't that great, but I thought, oh, an interview would be interesting. And I'm like, it's two hours long. How can it be? But all his podcasts are two hours long. Whoever that is, I can't think right now. But anyway, that's how I found the other guy's channel. And, uh, I went down a rabbit hole for like a month where I watched a whole bunch of his stuff. And that was probably about six months ago. I haven't watched anything since, but it, it, he has a good channel. Um, I heard the church was great with sister wives at first, then they kicked them out because of Cody. Um, I, you know what, Mary, I don't know, but I will say that, um, McKelty and Tony, I don't know how Tony would know this. He wasn't around, but McKelty said the church hated the show always. They didn't, they didn't like it at all. Um, and I have heard that they, it was still like a year or two into the show before they were excommunicated from the church. Um, but, uh, um, according to her, they, they weren't happy with it at all from the beginning. They just didn't like the idea of it. I mean, they probably knew the elders at the church know that there's a lot of things that aren't working here and they probably know who Cody is and thought, Oh, this isn't going to be a good representation <laughs> whatsoever. The wives, they're great, but I don't know about Cody. Um, so that's probably why they weren't thrilled with it right from the beginning. Um, anyway, that's what McKelty said, that they never liked it. That was just on a recent thing that she posted. You watch Brother Husbands too? Did you? Was that? Oh, you're vomiting. Okay. It must have been pretty bad. Did they just create their own faith or are they just doing this to like get on TV and say they want Brother Husbands? Oh, one husband's enough. I don't need another guy. All right. Seeking Sister Wives is going to be back in the spring. Yeah, I heard March. So March is tomorrow. So somewhere in the next 30 days, it should begin. Yeah, Cousin Ben calls out the church on a lot of stuff. Hey, I, I, the jury's out on him for me. I feel like he's really enjoying his fame right now, and he plays to the camera a lot. And so... I feel like there might be a slight degree of embellishment in his stories. I'm not saying he's lying at all, but um, I, I find him interesting. I don't follow him, but, you know, I've put a clip of what he said in one of my videos. Um, yeah, I, I just I can't quite I can't quite put a finger on it with him. I'll get tongue tied. Cody's words did not age well. Yeah, this book not aging well. Not at all. He just looks like a bigger liar than he did before. Oh. Yeah, you warned me, people. You did. Word salad mixed with lies. Absolutely. 
Love should be multiplied, not divided. Was he lying then or is he lying now? Or is he just always lying? Very good question. Ding, ding, ding. Option three. He's always lying. I don't think he has emotions. Yeah, Mary, you know what? And one of the videos I kind of pointed that out that like in real emotional times, he doesn't seem to cry. He only seems to cry for himself. So he's had tears, but it's just about him and his personal feelings. You know, like there's not that, there's no altruistic cry. There's not a crying for somebody else succeeding or for somebody else being hurt or, you know, like we saw no tears with truly. He put her into the hospital. Um, I may not have listened to that part, but the chapters are insightful. Yeah, yeah, this prologue isn't great. It's just a bunch of lies. Brady Williams was his name in My Five Wives Guy. Thanks, Michelle. Brady Williams. It was a good show. I'm sure you guys can find it somewhere. Some YouTuber probably has it posted too, but I think it used to be TLC. It might be in the archives there or maybe not if they took it down because they were concerned. Um. This was good. I enjoy Jenny reading because she catches things I passed over. Ah, you're currently starting chapter five. All right, Jennifer. Well, good. I'm glad I'm catching some of the stuff you're missing. Did you notice that I'm catching some things I'm missing as I'm going back and realizing, oh, I read that paragraph already, but I missed that. Uh, Amos game. Oh, we're talking Amos. Yeah. I'm glad Amos is gone. I didn't like him. I know. Some people were not happy with me in my video when I pretty much said that and that Jen um, didn't do enough sifting through resumes <laughs> when it came to Amos. There is something was off. It's just in hearing that he'd been with a lot of other reality stars and, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not against people who've been divorced, but four divorces, this would be a fifth marriage. I mean, like it's, it's just, it's just, I just think she can do better. That's all. I think Ben likes knowing something others don't. Yeah. That's the feeling you get, right, Lori? Like he's just all like he's yeah he he's like he gets off on on talking bad about the Brown family and sharing information that other people don't know. He has an, an arrogance about him that is an unsettling to me. I don't have a good reason for it though, so I guess I should just keep my opinion to myself. Amos seemed grifty. Yeah, unfortunately, he may have been. All right. Lovely. Mormon Stories Live. Thank you, Michelle. That is it. That's the other show. I, you know, this Mormonism Live is one. The other one's called Mormon Stories Live. I follow that channel too. And he does a lot of great interviews. He interviews people who are ex-Mormons. And is Cody considered an ex-Mormon? Because maybe on Mormonism Live, they do all kinds of different things. But all right. Nice chatting with you, sister friends. This has been lovely. You are welcome, Brooke. You're welcome. Thank you all for being here. I love the live too. I loved all your things. I can't wait to later on go back and just reread the whole chat and all the fun things you say to each other. Thank you for tuning in next Thursday night, 8 p.m. Be here, be square. If ever I'm not having one, I'll try to put a video, put it in the front of one of my videos or at the end of one of my videos to let you know, but I will try to use more of my Instagram as well. So I'll try to always post that it's coming up on there. And again, I'm pretty sure it's senior perspective one, two, three on Instagram. All right. I'm going to end the stream now and I will see you next Thursday, but you'll probably see a video or two from me in between there. Thank you for joining. Bye, everybody.